Okay, uh, in John chapter 14, we see Jesus preparing his disciples, uh, comforting them because he's about to go to the cross and he is about to leave. He's about to pass through. He's about to die and subsequently he will be resurrected. And he's saying, I will go, verse 3, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. And in verse 4, he says, you know the way to the place where I'm going. But Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? And <clears throat> for many people and many Christians, they don't know the way, and they are not sure of where they are going. We all mention heaven, that we sing songs of heaven, and I know in the past there have been many songs about heaven and the journey and the other side. So, <clears throat> in some respects, every human being knows the way. We all know that at some point due to circumstance or the passage of time we will pass away. This body will pass on. We will die either by accident or old age and that is where Jesus was going he was going to that place where we all must eventually go and when Jesus answered Thomas question he said I am the way and the truth and the life no one comes to the Father except through me if you really know me you will know my father as well from now on you do know him and have seen him in other words, when we die, as most people imagine, uh, it's a, a different existence. And some people are atheists, they don't believe in God, so they don't know the Father. <laughs> I guess in, with Jesus answered Thomas, If you really know me, you will know my father as well. But as an atheist and an agnostic, uh, they don't really know the father. And then you have all of these other heathen and idolatrous uh, sex that don't know the Father and don't know Jesus. And I think that's what we have to look at when Jesus addressed Thomas's doubt and his legitimate questions. Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way?
And Jesus, in verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. In other words, the way is through death. He is the truth and the life. It, it, it wasn't just a simple answer to Thomas's question. Jesus is the way. He is the truth. There's no doubt, there's no agnosticism about Jesus being the way. Uh, and he is the life. Everything else is is going to be truly death. If you're if you're atheist, you don't believe in God, well, you don't know the Father. If you don't know the Father, then there's no reason for you to continue on in existence in the Father's universe. If you don't know Him, give for me. I I, I don't know you. If uh. If you think that uh, another sect that uh, touts maybe a reincarnation, uh, some some other thing, that's not the Father's way. Why would uh, the Father allow you to continue to de degenerate? Uh, the some of the basic tenets of reincarnation is well you do good then you then you reincarnate to a better existence if you do bad then you reincarnate to a, a lower existence trouble and suffering And then that, that, that your trouble and suffering is going to be uh, mixed in with other people. And why should they have to suffer along with you if that was your choice? Why should good people have to bear the burden for eternity? Of, of of you making bad choices why should your bad choices put a a, a damp on the day of a, of a of the righteous individuals we have to look at that that's the flaw uh, uh, a simple that, that can be seen in that here we must suffer here in this present world yes as as righteous individuals we must bear the burdens to a certain point and and live amongst the weeds and the tares but eventually we'll be gathered into the father's born and the weeds and the tares will be burned because that's the choices that they made they chose not to know the father because I don't think when Jesus answered Thomas's question he left him without any doubt and and as Christians we shouldn't have doubt we all know that we we must die before uh, the rapture if, if the rapture does not come before the before our time we must pass on through what what we call death and we have to also add in the Jewish history and traditions and their understanding to when Jesus answered Thomas question uh, Abraham's bosom paradise and Sheol were concepts that the Jewish people believed in and had trust in and also 
uh, resurrection because they knew the father that's evident when when uh, Mary and Martha met Jesus at the brother's grave site and said if you had been here my brother would not have died and Jesus said well he will live again Now in uh, John uh, 11, uh, verse 23, Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. In verse 24, Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. And here, verse 25, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Now, that bit of information must be tied in with the answer to Thomas's question what was demonstrated at the tomb of Lazarus and Lazarus resurrection There have not been many accounts of resurrections. We have the prophets in the Old Testament. We have the many miracles of Jesus and the apostles miracles of resurrection from the dead so this was a, a, a thought and a belief in the Jewish community. The uh, authorized King James Version has a, a little better description in verse uh, 25. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believeth thou this? So Thomas had witnessed resurrections. He was there, but I think the question would be, who's gonna say come forth? Because uh, at, at all previous instances, the, a man of God was there in the Old Testament, New Testament, and even the apostles someone was there a man of God was there to to perform to speak the word as Jesus said told Lazarus to come forth so who would be there To, to, to speak for Jesus and I think that 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 gets to uh, to answer Thomas's question and 
Philip has a question, Lord, show us the Father, and that would be enough for us. And Jesus posed his questions, don't you know me, Philip? Even after all of this time, I've been along with you. Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father and that the Father is in me? And, and he goes on to say, if you don't believe in me, the words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. And, and since we're dealing with this resurrection uh, 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 and, and we use uh, Lazarus' resurrection as, as evidence and as, as an explanation to Thomas's doubt, and we who are not in this time have to go on and Jesus addressed that when he addressed Thomas doubt after the resurrection on the second uh, uh, week when he appeared in the upper room and Thomas was there and he told Thomas that in uh, John chapter 20 uh, now Thomas Verse 24, one of the twelve was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. In verse 26, a week later, his disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them, though the doors were locked. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your fingers here, see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, and I think Jesus is speaking to all of us today, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Thomas had doubts walking with Jesus, seeing miracles being performed, uh, seeing people resurrected, not understanding the way, having the whole history of the uh, of living in the, the Jewish culture of uh, the chosen people the scriptures manifestations of God the law and the prophets they lived in that culture and he was still having difficulty witnessing uh, 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 believing And today, we, we, we're not privy to such manifold manis manifestations of, of God's miracles. Uh, they may be small in, in uh, uh, stature. They may be uh, uh, few or far between, but I, I hear pastors uh being in the community of Christ of Christian community and, and keeping my ear in the community I hear pastors speaking on resurrections 
and 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 the miracles being performed, people being raised from a dead life state, people being healed. So these things are are occurring in the community. In the Christian community, we just have to look and we have to hear and and we have to believe. And and we have to also uh be be wary because there are uh false prophets there are false apostles and that there, there will be lying signs and wonders in this last day but all accounts are not to be doubted all uh 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 People professing that God has 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 miraculously uh, healed them, or that family members have been raised from the dead, all of those accounts cannot be uh, uh, totally not uh, 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 disbelieved, because as Christians we believe that these things uh, uh, are manifested in, uh, by men of God, women of God in the earth. This is what we believe. And so blessed are those that have not seen and yet believe the word. And then we tie in this to the centurion servant. When he, he told Jesus that I am a man under authority in the earth and in, in worldly uh, matters in a military form. I, things, I get orders, I receive orders, and then I, I, I conduct those orders and I make sure that those orders are done. So I am a man under authority and I have men under my authority. And I say, go, and one goes. I say, come, one comes. So, Lord, I know that you, I, I recognize your authority <laughs> from God. But, but I, I see what's going on, and you have authority. And by the nature of, the, uh, uh, of what's being done, you have authority from on high. So I know all you have to do is speak the word. And my servant shall be healed. Today we have the word. And it's authorized. And we must see that authority. We must have eyes as that centurion servant. And see. The authority in the word. And in the scriptures. And like Jesus said, stop doubting and believe. And in the King James Version, he told Thomas, and be not faithless, but believing. Be not faithless, but believing is, is what he told Thomas. I think that I want to look at the the translation in the King James it's a little more potent be not faithless but believing blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed so even if if, if we were during Thomas could have doubt and, and lack of faith after witnessing these things and I think it, it's, 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 it's just putting the connection I mean uh, Jesus saying just by the works that you've seen just by the works that you've seen know that it's, it's God the power of God working in me 
and from your understanding of God uh, is not a, 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 a deal with falsities or lies or, or deceit that God is true. Pristine, righteous. For him to work with anybody, they have to be pristine and righteous. And so that his work that he performs is righteous. Because as we see, this earth is righteous. And we have to contemplate on these things. And furthermore, we can look at Thomas. Let's, let's stay with Thomas. Thomas's perception. Thomas's mindset. Thomas witnessed a few things. He was a disciple. He walked with Jesus. But let's look at after the resurrection of Jesus. The disciples went to Thomas and told him, we have seen Jesus. And Thomas said, like many say today, well, unless I see a miracle or put my hands in the nail prints and in his side, I ain't going to believe you. He has his friends coming and telling him, giving him a word, which many preachers do today. They give the people a word of faith. Of what they've seen the Lord do in their life. But Thomas did not believe. He was faithless until he was able to touch and see Jesus. And it's unfortunate that some people require a drastic touch of the Lord in their lives. in order for them to believe. And the unfortunate part about that is we, we start to get into the Israelites in the desert with Moses after the miracle of the Red Sea, the miracles of uh, in Egypt, the manna from heaven daily, six days a week, quail, water from the rock. Fiery serpents, healings. After all of that, manifestations, uh, uh, they still did not have the faith to act. independently and go into the promised land. They didn't have faith for that after all of these manifestations. So manifestations is not the problem with faith, with people having faith. It's something else. And that something else is a level of faithlessness. We all as Christians and even some of the non-Christians that have an affinity for the Christian doctrine have levels of faith in God. And Thomas's 
faith did not reach the level of saving faith a faith that would spur him on to action he was not in the company of believers he was not in a position to be blessed he was not in the room the first week when the doors when uh, were locked and Jesus came in so if he's not there and likewise if we are not in the proper position if our faith does not put us in the proper position to be blessed, that will be detrimental for our own souls. Because Jesus will come to us and say, get from me for I never knew you. So we must, as Jesus told Thomas in John chapter 20, be not faithless, but believing. Act on your faith. It requires action and exercising of our faith in God, in the doctrine presented in the Bible. And we must follow two instructions, one given in the Old Testament in Joshua 1, meditate in the word day and night, so that we can make our way prosperous. And in the New Testament, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. If we practice these two commandments, Then our doubt and our faithlessness will be alleviated. We will become stronger in our faith and our level of faith will increase and our actions associated with our belief will correspond to the level of faith that is approved by God. And brothers and sisters, may the grace of the Lord be with your spirits. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen.